The other day, a friend asked, how do cameras really work? I'd really want to understand. I thought, why not make a video explaining how cameras work in very simple terms? So in this video, I'll be explaining a few things you may have heard before. Frame rate, ISO, shutter speed, aperture, white balance. But before any of that, let's have it in mind that cameras together with their lenses functions the same way our eyes do. And for some of us who use glasses, just think of that as better lenses. So whether you own a phone camera like an iPhone or an Android, a Blackmagic, Canon or RED camera, do know that these five elements are important for knowing your camera with the ISO, shutter speed and aperture working in tandem. Let's roll intro. To understand how cameras work, I always tell people to think of them as their eyes. Sometimes you aren't able to see certain things and then you have to squint your eyes. What happens when you squint your eyes? There's less light, right? It's kind of darker. Or when you cover your eyes with both hands just to focus on one thing, same thing happens, there's less light and hence, it's darker. Now, let's try something different. Put both hands in front of your eyes. Maybe your right eye and put the left hand maybe further away from your eye and try to focus on your left eye. You notice that the right hand of yours becomes out of focus while your left hand is in focus. Same thing applies to cameras. The first thing I advise is to shoot in manual mode. Some cameras, mainly DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, have all these different modes, aperture priority, program, shutter, auto modes and more, where the camera does all the calculations on your behalf. Whether you have an expensive cinema camera set in auto mode, a cheap camera set in manual mode will produce a better image when set correctly. So first thing, set your camera to manual mode and let's go into the first thing, which is frame rate. Frame rate refers to how many frames and one second of your video. I like to see it as how many still pictures make up one second of a video. So if you shoot 25 frames per second as an example, in one second, the camera would have shot 25 frames of pictures. The reason we need to know about frame rate is because we should shoot in some frame rate and avoid others as well. Right now, the industry standard is 24 frames or 23.978 frames per second. This is the most cinematic used in Nollywood today. And depending on your region, 24 or 25 frames per second. This will give you the most naturally looking motion or close to what our eyes see. So it's best to set your cameras to this frame rate depending on your region. There was a film that was shot in 48 frames per second. This was The Hobbit and viewers complained that it looked like a home video. It wasn't really well received. So take note, if you want your videos to look cinematic, shoot in this frame rate. But what if you want to do slow motion? If you shot in like say 25 frames per second and you wanted to slow it down, the footage would look definitely choppy. So if you want to get that lovely silk slow motion, you would have shot in a higher frame rate like 50, 60, 100, maybe 120 if your camera allows that and slow it down in post. So remember, if you want to achieve nice looking slow motion in post, shoot a higher frame rate and then slow down in post. Sometimes I ask, do you need this in slow motion? And that's what I call the three pillars of exposure. These three settings you must know how to juggle all at once in order to get the right exposure. ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. These three settings affect the exposure of your frame or image. They also affect a few other things that you need to be aware of. And instead of just learning one of them, it will do you good to learn all of them at the same time. So we can show you how to adjust each one in order to get the right exposure. The first setting and most likely the easiest one to understand is ISO. The ISO is used to either make the image frame or frames brighter or darker completely digitally. With this, you're able to adjust the exposure of your camera regardless of the amount of light you have on your set or whether it is daytime or nighttime. On your iPhone, you will normally just click and hold the image sliding up or down to make the image brighter or darker. Now, ISO is mainly measured on a different scale. It's usually 100, 125, 150, maybe 200, 400 and so on. Some cameras go as high as 200,000 or more. The higher the number, the brighter the image. Now I'm sure you're probably thinking, if my image is dark, I can just continue increasing my ISO. Well, there's a downside to this. And this is that just increasing your ISO might introduce some grain or noise into your image. And your image begins to look like those old static TV videos. Now on a picture, it doesn't really look that bad. It kind of makes the image have that old vintage style. But in video, 
the noise will actually move about and it begins to have that static look. So to see how this works, if I put my lens cap over my lens and have the ISO at 100, you may not notice any noise. But as I keep bumping up my ISO to say 25,000 and over, you begin to see the noise. So imagine this over your image. Most new cameras like the newer Sony cameras are very good at keeping the image clean even at high ISO. Other cinema cameras like the Blackmagic do have dual gain ISO to keep the image clean. My advice would be to try as much as possible to keep your ISO lower than 1000 if your camera doesn't have dual gain ISO. But then again, most cinema cameras begin to introduce noise at around 1600 ISO. The second pillar of exposure is called shutter speed. The shutter speed in your camera is how long your image is exposed to the world. The sensor inside the camera is what sees the world and captures the image to the SD card of your camera. There's a shutter inside your camera just in front of the sensor that prevents the sensor from seeing anything. This is common in DSLR cameras but not found in cine cameras or mirrorless cameras. The shutter works just exactly as your eyelid. If your eyelid were to close, you wouldn't see anything. When you open it, you get to see. Same applies to the shutter of your camera. When the shutter opens, it allows the camera to see the image and when it closes, it doesn't. So if this happens just once, the camera would have captured one image and you would normally hear the shutter open and close. Now, depending on how fast your shutter opens and closes would affect how bright or how dark your image would be. So if your shutter is slow and stays open for a long time, that means that the shot sensor is taking in as much light as possible. If this happens so quick, this means that less light hit the sensor, resulting in a darker image. This applies mostly in photography. But in video, this is all done digitally, affecting how long all the single frames are exposed to the world for. So take note, slower shutter speed, brighter image, faster shutter speed, darker image. Shutter speed affects something else. When you adjust the shutter speed of your camera, you also affect the motion blur. Say for instance, we are taking a picture of a fast moving toy car. If you set the shutter speed high, you should be able to see the toy car in the middle of the frame. So there will be no motion blur. But if the shutter speed was set slow, you would barely see the car. It would look smeared across the frame. This is the same as in video, as it would affect all the single frames in one second. If we were to also use the Fanax example, at a slow shutter speed, you would notice motion blur. But if we were to increase the shutter speed, the motion blur disappears. If we were to pause this shot and compare them side by side, we can see that the one on the left with the slow shutter speed has motion blur when compared to the one on the right with the fast shutter speed. Many filmmakers use shutter speed to convey a message to the viewers. If we were to use a very low shutter speed like 15, we would get like a dreamy image which would look strange. Except that is what you were gunning for. If you were to turn your shutter speed very high, you will get the effect used in a film like Saving Private Ryan. Most war films use this effect. Now the rule to get a natural motion blur is that whatever frame rate you are filming, your shutter speed should be twice that. For example, if you are shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be double that, which would be 48 or 50, because most camera shutter speeds are in increments of tens. If you're shooting at 25 frames per second, what should your shutter speed be? If you got 50, you are right. Also know that in cameras, the shutter speed are usually in fractions 1 over 48 or 1 over 50. If you're shooting 60 frames per second, your shutter speed would be 120 or 1 over 120. In modern cinematic cameras, they use shutter angles instead. 180 degrees, 175.5 degrees, and so on. Some cameras allow you to switch the settings between shutter speed as a fraction and shutter angle, depending on what the user is comfortable with. Now, on to aperture. Aperture is the third pillar of exposure. The aperture is usually found in lenses and not in the camera. Some people refer to aperture as the eye of the camera. The aperture regulates or controls how much light is let into your camera reaching the sensor. It acts just like the pupil in your eye. They open up to let more light into your eye and close up when less light is available. Let's take this lens as an example. As I turn the ring around the lens, you should notice something inside the lens open and close. What closes and open inside the lens are called aperture rings or blades. They control the amount of light passing through the lens to either make your image darker 
or brighter. You can change the aperture setting of your lens without touching your ISO or shutter speed. And just like your ISO and shutter speed, the aperture also affects something else and that is the depth of field. The depth of field is how blurry the background is. It also means that the amount that is in focus becomes much smaller or wider. For example, in the shot here, let's say at f22, a very small amount of light is let through the lens and due to this, the background becomes into focus. But if I open up this lens to say f2.2, this means that I have let in much light as possible that the lens allows and hence the background becomes blurry or out of focus. With these two different apertures, I can now adjust my ISO to closely match both shots. So when you change the aperture, you do affect the exposure and also the background. Filmmakers use this technique to draw their viewers to what they want them to see or focus on in the frame. Also know that you need not use this technique all the time as you may want to see what's in the background like in a war film where there's a vast army or a lot of people. The aperture or f-stop on your lens is measured a bit different from what you would normally measure. They go from f22 to f5.6 or even f4 and so on. Now all lenses have the ability to go down to f5.6 but lenses that do go lower than f5.6 begin to become more expensive and they are going to keep raising in price as the aperture begins to get lower and lower. For example, this 50mm lens from Canon can stop down to f1.8 and cost $110, while this 50mm lens from Canon can stop down to f1.4 and cost $231. You pay more for lenses that have a lower aperture. Now the last setting to learn as a beginner filmmaker is white balance. Most filmmakers don't consider this at all and that is why the footages look terrible and strange. So even if you get your ISO aperture or shutter speed right, if your white balance is off, your shot is going to look ruined, if and only if you shot in RAW. White balance is basically telling your camera what is pure white. If the setting is off, your white will look blue or orange, resulting with all other colors in the frame leaning towards that direction. So if you're dealing with an orange light, you need to tell your camera what kind of light you're dealing with so that your white appear as pure white. Your camera comes with several presets to get pure white, tungsten, daylight, fluorescent, which you can set if you're filming in those conditions, or you can set a custom white balance to dial it in more accurately. There's also the auto white balance where you tell your camera to choose the right color temperature for you, Although this makes shooting easy, this is dangerous as the camera may miss in its calculation because you are telling your camera to choose whatever color temperature it thinks is right. And also it has the ability to constantly change the color throughout the scene. And to fix this, you need to set the correct white balance properly so that it doesn't fluctuate. And getting the right white balance is easy. You either know the color temperature of the light you're working with and set your white balance according to that or if you want to be more precise, buy one of these gray cards online, maybe from Amazon or eBay. I'll leave a link in the description so you can get one of these. You have the subject hold of the gray card in front of the camera where the light will be hitting onto. Go to white balance on your camera. You simply put the box which comes on the screen and hit the set button and automatically your camera would have the perfect white balance for that shot. What is happening here is that you are telling the camera what kind of light is in the scene and the camera can adjust it for the right color temperature for great perfect skin tone as well. This works same for most cameras. Some cameras would take a picture like the Canon cameras. Very simple to do, yet many beginning filmmakers are not doing it. So these are the basic things you need to know to master your camera. Remember, ISO changes your exposure but adds noise or grain. Shutter speed changes your exposure but also adds motion blur. And aperture affects the depth of field or how much light you are allowing through the lens into the sensor of your camera. One very important thing I would advise beginner filmmakers to get is an ND filter. This allows for further adjusting of the amount of light going through the lens when you are filming in very bright environments. I need to open the lens for a wider depth of field and I also cannot go low enough. So please everyone you should get an ND filter. All these settings can be found on the display of your screen. Some cameras have your exposure meter bar to tell you if you are overexposed or underexposed. The meter can be a lifesaver. If it goes to the right, then it's overexposed. If it goes to the left, then it's underexposed. And in the middle, you're perfectly 
exposed. So get out there and practice, 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 so that this becomes part of you. Remember, if you learned anything from this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. See you the next time. Bye-bye.